Don't forget to click the subscribe button. And the gals that were scared, as they rightfully should be, because it's not easy. It's easier than any other game in town, but it's not easy. You're going to hear Thomas later today or is it tomorrow. He says, look to the guy to the right of you, he's going to fail. Look to the guy to the left of you, he's going to fail. Look to the guy in front of you and back of you, they're going to fail. And he was right. And he was right. Uh, but we saved Balmer to the end uh, because he is, he's a known alpha male. And you don't have to be an alpha male. One of the things that uh, I normally say before now, but I'm going to say it now, 99% uh, of the them aren't alphas. There's only a couple alphas in the Hall of Fame. Bruce Whipple's certainly not an alpha. They're not alphas. You don't, you don't have to be an alpha male to be a high-performance high person. But I've never seen a part-time high-performance person. You have to be full-time. Well, time, a couple of you asked me, should I quit my job? Uh, well, if you can live and you're not going to starve to death, the answer is yes. If you're going to starve to death, the answer is no. If your wife or your uh, whoever, would you call the person that you live with, makes enough money to support you, most of you don't. But if you do, occasionally a guy comes here, his, his wife's a surgeon. Well, fine. Well, she makes enough money. But it's a full-time deal. And that's what makes Andreas' uh, success story that much better, um, even though I don't talk much about it. He worked a full-time job as a senior uh, financial analyst. Uh, and so he's making calls before he goes to work, lunchtime, after work. He'd stay at work so he didn't fight traffic and lose an hour or whatever and, and make calls um, from his office. And then when his job ended, I mean, his productivity, I mean, and uh, the amount of calls and all the other things he did just uh, grew geometrically. But as he said, he had that slow time. And in any sales, you know, it's peaks and valleys. And as long as the, the valleys are above the last valley, you're making progress. Um, and in any sales game, if you will, um, it's not just everybody straight up. Even I had some off time. Off time meaning I didn't sell. But um, when I had a 96.4% closing ratio, because Kelly Norwood, my sales manager, thief that he was, a young boy like you ought to close every cocksucker that walks through the door. And that was my expectation. And you heard um, Thomas, he says, he closed about 80%. Because... I told him a young guy like you ought to close every cocksucker. 80% is it's great in sales, but low for me. That's what your expectations are. And I know the material is good enough to close every single person you talk to. If you don't start eh, 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 like that when you're, when you're reading it. Anything else about Steve? Yes, sir. Uh, fix the problem straight away and, and love the company like it's your child. When Steve left uh, Microsoft, he had trained six, seven, eight guys to be preeminent world-class salesmen to replace him, himself. And he said he wouldn't leave until, because uh, Gates left long before that, he wouldn't leave until, he wouldn't leave uh, Microsoft in a lurch for sales. Because Mr. Balmer, as I know, the top line is, all the rest is bullshit. Top line. Anything else? Um, yes, sir. EJ. Yeah. Oh, when when Steve, uh, excuse me, when uh, Bill Gates founded Microsoft, his goal was he wanted to put a computer in every home in America. Okay. Then he changed it to put two. Almost everybody's got two, except those poor people like yourself. You know, came from the 
I'm the, the shit. He, and then he said in later years, I wish I had said it, every home in the world. You only fulfill up to your wildest expectation. My goal, I, I didn't, I, other than trillion dollars, which I thought would be a slam dunk for me, but it, it turned out to be a long motherfucking haul. All the other goals I had, almost immediately, I uh, accomplished or completed. Almost in a natural sequence. Which means they were too, too low. And mine were pretty high. Some of the guys out there, um, Marcus made 100 million euros. I mean, not overnight, but almost overnight, years ago. And some of the other guys, Bavaria and Bob made uh, you know, a couple hundred million euros, which that was his goal, uh, almost overnight. Heiko the Foss made a billion almost overnight. Those happen to be all, all three Germanics. But uh, it was almost overnight. And I mean, it happens. It just, it just happens. Anything else about Steve? Yes, sir, in the back. Uh, he made a point that stuck out to me that um, as a leader, if you don't believe in your company and you don't embrace it, you're just going to screw it up. Correct. Most of you have had jobs, and you alluded to it on your paperwork, um, that you know, you're there, there for a paycheck, more or less. And when you're there for a paycheck, more or less, it becomes just you know, rudimentary, and uh, you can't wait to. You go in a big office building in New York or London, 5 o'clock, you get run down uh, at the elevators and the escalators where people leave in the buildings. Literally, you get run down. Um, in Japan, it's the same, but older people, they revere people that are old, so the young kids don't run the old people down. You know, I still know my kids getting up and giving me their chair. I, that makes me feel very uncomfortable and very old. You know? uh, but um, that's because they don't like what they're doing. I, I think I told you, or I've said it on YouTube, I know my kids hate this story. Because uh, the godfather of Derek was my big boss uh, in, uh, on Wall Street. And Bob Donato said, every five or six or seven days, we'd have security escort your father out of the building, take him home to his apartment. Because I would be there 24-7 taking sponge baths. I didn't know what a sponge bath was when I went to Wall Street in 1972. That's where you're over a sink and you're washing yourself. I didn't leave the building. And our kids hate that story. Hate it. Because they thought that I was exaggerating, but when the godfather of Derek's godfather says, no, he wouldn't leave. Security would have to drag him out. I used to buy half a dozen shirts at Brooks Brothers. By the way, Brooks Brothers, it's an inexpensive suit. Well, maybe not. But it's not Walmart suit, but I mean, it's the best bang for your buck. Now, this suit was made by uh, the royal tailor, John Kent, who now, unfortunately, Brian Rose uses, and uh, like uh, the, uh, the, uh, Prince Philip, who just died, is tailor. Um, but in those days, I used to wear Brooks Brothers clothes. It was good enough for Abraham Lincoln. It was good enough for me. And so I'd buy half a dozen shirts and underwear, and I'd have them in my desk drawer, and I'd change right there. Didn't go home. Because during the summer, uh, uh, the subways in those days, I mean, 100, 110, 120 degrees, was not unusual. The graffiti and all the other shit that used to go on the subway didn't bother me. But my suits would be wet by the time I went from 27th and Lexington, where I used to live, only 27 blocks down to Wall Street, it would be soaked during the summer um, because of the humidity. But Steve is a great example. Uh, not that you have to be an alpha male, but all in. And he was certainly all in. 
Anything else about Mr. Obama? Yes, sir. As you were saying, people going in just for a check, he said his leadership style included inclusivity to try to draw people in so that they weren't there just for a check. You want your employees. Now, I, lo I don't like uh, that Thomas calls our guys citizens. I think that's horseshit. You know, that's, that's too airy fairy for me, you know. I don't call any of these fuckers citizens. Asshole! Um, but they're there. He sucked them into the vortex uh, with the sales skills and his dream. Um, but so far, he's done well. And um, since I came in, although we doubled it, productivity, he didn't, he didn't think productivity could double. We were operating at 100% of what he thought we could do, they could do. And I, I knew, uh, I'm disappointed I only doubled the productivity. And the, uh, just as I told you, uh, really guys that have money, they don't look for ROIs and shit like that. You know, uh, if I can't double my money in 18 months, and uh, when you bring in people, the jargon, because words are really important. And uh, leadership filters down from the chairman through the CEO and founder, because you're going to be this, not the CEO, but you're going to be the founder. And they, they look at, you know, they, they, uh, it's not that they hang on every word you say, but, you know, you know uh, Thomas said such and such. And he's the founder. And he's done very, very well so far. Um, Marcus, you know, these guys, they look to the founders um, for guidance. Now, t today, uh, they don't use the word leadership very often. They say guidance. I don't like the word guidance. Guidance is too witchy-watchy, as my old grandmother would say, but couldn't speak English. It's too witchy-watchy. Because leadership implies you're imposing something that may or may not they want to do. And that's exactly fucking right. Leadership is getting you and you and you to do what I want you to do when I want you to fucking do it. Not when you wake up, get around to it. And in today's airy-fairy world, that's not a popular theme. Again, do you want to be liked? Or do you want to be effective? And I could just put the word instead of effective. Do you want to be liked or do you want to be rich? Do you want to be liked or do you want to be wealthy? But that's that's even a little too much for me. So we'll just leave it at effective. But that's what I'm really saying. And people normally that are liked, they used to use the word pleaser. I was called a lot of things in my life, but that's not one of them. Never. And when, um, when Sally has met some of the people that I've known 40, 50 years, um, Dan never cared what anybody thought of him. Dan never cared about what anybody said about him. Dan only cared if they touched him. Dan was going to leave him on the ground. And now the whole culture is, you know, uh, and I said it the first day, kids are committing suicide from not just Bitcoin, but because they, get, they were unliked or people said bad things about them on the, on the internet. Anything else about Steve? Yes, sir. And you're going to hire people in your vein, like not like you, like you want to be. Your first board will have people that are a notch or two or six or eight better than you, but you still tend to uh, hire people that kind of look like you, that, you know, that, uh, you know, like men in black, they're all, all the same. And those aren't the most successful. The most successful are people that are out of your comfort zone by you know two or three standard deviations from the mean. I mean, way, way out. 
stretching you as much as humanly possible. And as Thomas said, so, you know, he's starting to be, he's still not there, be comfortable being uncomfortable. And you heard him talk about being sapped of energy and just being fucked at the end of the day. And if you're not doing that, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. And for those of you, and I said it in the first few hours of the first day of the seminar, you're going to get sick. And, you know, I don't, you know, we have, we have nervous breakdowns. We, um, it's, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to promote that. But even a big, strong guy like uh, the naval officer, uh, his system shut down. He wanted it so fucking bad. He was in the hospital. But he snapped back. Now, if he was a little skinny weenie like you, he may have died. But because he isn't a little skinny mini like you, he snapped back. But that's what I expect. That's what I demand. If you want to be all you can be. If you don't, again, I've never seen a part-time um, high-performance person. Anything else about Steve? Yes, sir. If you're a one-trick pony, then you're a successful company. If you're a two-trick, then you're a world leader. Yeah, I mean, I don't care if you ever get a second or third trick. I, I, you know, I'm happy with you, for you, if you're a one-trick fucking pony. Because that's more, tr one, one trick's more than the trick you got now. So I'm happy. Now, the guys like, you know, the Amazon guys and the Google guys, and, you know, are, and Zuckerberg arguably are, you know, two, three trick ponies. Then they argue what's a real trick and what's an iteration. One is good enough, okay? And I don't say that very often. And the sooner you make that one trick and you uh, reap the benefits of the one trick, it's like uh, Peter, the hospital guy. You know, he's not wearing $3,000 sports coats, um, but he still feels uncomfortable spending more than 200 euros for a dinner. For he and his wife. And, you know, he's gone from, he went from scratch to the second largest hospital uh, owner in the, in the Eastern Bloc of Europe in about three and a half years. And, and a lot of money. And he's off doing it again. Anything else? Yes. Very organized and rigid with his time. Oh, that brings me a good point. Balmer and Bill, legend has it. They used to meet every, uh, only um, twice a month. And they would trade diaries, calendars. Steve would look at Bill's and vice versa. You don't need that meeting. You don't need that meeting going forward. And Elon and Bill share a, a, a common trait. Their meetings are in five-minute increments. You've got five minutes. You guys can't even say, how do you do? Kiss my ass in five minutes. Five minutes. The beginning, the middle, and the end in five minutes. Because, I mean, time is precious. Time is the only thing you can't get back, kids. You can make money back. You can't get time back. And even though none of you are old enough, a couple of the older guys think they're old enough, but I'm 20 plus years older than they are. Uh, the, um, when you're running on a runway, you're running out of runway. Um, the oldest we had here uh, that uh, went out and was successful with QLA was 77. The youngest was 13. And the, the Alex, the, uh, my phenom, current phenom, uh, I broke his heart one because he thought for sure he was going to be the youngest. 13. We were, you know. But he's doing a phenomenal job. Phenomenal job. Um, he's gonna, he says, he, he and his family, uh, and I don't know if the Greeks uh, are like uh, the Mexicans. I don't know if he's coming for 82 Greek kids uh, to hear me talk at... Uh, Cornell, but any more news about Cornell Cat? Okay. Anything else about Steve? Yes, ma'am. He says that he 
remain optimistic through all the times? Yeah. You, uh, you can never show doubt. You can never show fear. Everything's okay. The captain of the Titanic, although he, he went down to the ship, as he should have, uh, he uh, wasn't saying that we're all going to drown. Even though when the water was up to his last nostril, you oh, everything's always going to be okay. Terrific. I used to say terrific. And you heard when Thomas said, even though he after some meetings, he beat the shit. Now, some of those beat the shit meetings were with me on Zoom, telling him whatever I told him, which is confidential, but that I wasn't as happy as, uh, as I wanted to be. When my, my daughter becomes prime minister, I'm not going to be happy. It's not enough. That's it. When I, when I stop doing this, when I'm 80, I'm going to run for a seat here in parliament, go down, and I'm going to vie for this uh, 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 prime ministership. About the same time, my daughter, and it's going to be the old man against his daughter for prime minister here. Duking it out. She says, Daddy, you'll be old. I says, Honey, I'm going to crush you. And grind you up and put, them, put you in my martini. But that, these are the kind of goals. How can I think that? In my 80s, I'm going to go be prime minister. Because I'm me. That's why I will be the second, second American ever to, to be prime minister. And who was the first Winston fucking Churchill? Was an American citizen. That dual citizenship. You will never exceed your highest. Huh? And duke it out with my daughter. Boom, you little bitch. And you're worried about getting a fucking chairman. You see the difference? Anything else about Steve? And when he bought the Clippers, and he fucked everything up by paying $2 billion, if I remember correctly, and uh, the highest before that was a billion three or a billion four, and now all the sports teams, ah, $2 billion, $3 billion. He didn't give a shit. He didn't care that the other <laughs> owners, the other owners, Basketball owners loved him because all their teams were worth more now. Okay, we're going to talk about the, the, the two cases. Now, at the one-day seminar, for those of you that were there in uh, January uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago, I talked about the two cases. Um, how you, even though you know how to do it, the most common response to you're supposed to do it is one case I'm going to show you, which isn't right, but it, it gets the job done. And then the second is the 60-40 model. Uh, which in today's market with Corona, now I had 60-40 way be fucking before fucking Corona. I've had a long, long, long time. Remember, you start... We're going to get back to the board, but I want to do this now. So if there's any questions, because you're slow. Goodbye, YouTube.